Hello and welcome to Y'all Stay Home. This is the second day of our virtual event. So excited to have you for today's Story Ball. If you appreciate what we do at Y'all West, please go visit the site, consider donating at the donate link. Uh, donate if you like us, donate if you'd like to see us do better. We really appreciate it and we can't wait you, for you to enjoy the second day in this big event. So here we go. Over to you, the mysterious anonymous Bosch. Yes, I am a pseudonymous Bosch, uh, the author of a series that's too secret to discuss, and another one that's too bad to discuss, uh, and a new one that is so unbelievable, uh, you wouldn't believe it if I discussed it. So that's my, my story. Uh, and we are here today uh, for Story Ball. Uh, that is the annual uh, Y'all West event, uh, and also Y'all Fest event, uh, where authors uh, turn it around and uh, get to be lazy and have our readers write stories like for that. us. Um, today, I have, uh, to help with this story, or to, to help not write the story, uh, I have a, a, a few uh, very talented authors with me. Um, in no particular order, although it's alphabetical. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna start with Soman Chanani, uh, the author of uh, the School for Good and Evil <laughs> series. Um, and you're here now, I believe, uh, is that the last book in the series, Soman? This is the fifth one, but the last one comes out on June 2nd. Ah. And it is done and it is printed and if uh, all the shipping companies break and everything falls apart, I will Santa Claus them to your house myself. <laughs> uh, now, you know, one or two uh, people have read that series. I mean, I know it hasn't sold very many books and there haven't been very many readers. Uh, but actually, that's not, a, that's a lie. There are quite a few uh, fans of Soman's. Uh, so as they know, uh, this series uh, is about a school School for Good and Evil, uh, that tells you the title. Soman uh, is a, uh, a student of evil. He claims to be, uh, very, I, I've spoken to him in the past. He, ha he, he, he thinks he's very evil. And I'm gonna test I his am. evil. <laughs> uh, so this last book in the series, if you were truly evil, you would spoil the whole series for us right now and tell us exactly what happens at the end. They all get together and eat sushi, which we're not allowed to do at the moment because uh, we have to stay at home and not go to restaurants. So I feel like that is the most evil ending possible, is a not socially distant sushi dinner where you're all touching the raw fish together. <laughs> that sounds truly evil. You pass. <laughs> all right. Um, okay. So we have our evil author, Soman. Who else do we have with us? Uh, we have Mike Johnson. His book is Confessions of a Dork Lord, and coincidentally, uh, it's about uh, somebody who wants to be evil, I believe. I is try. that right, Mike? You know, I try. Um, I'm not very good at it, but maybe in the second book, I'll be evil. He'll be evil. Maybe. Do you think, do you think, do you think, your, your, you think your hero needs to go to a school for good and evil? Yeah, I, you know what? There is no school for good and evil in my novel, so maybe that was an oversight. Um. <laughs> So that's the, that's when is that the sequel that's now? What's your story? Is there? This a, is uh, I don't know, but I'm waiting for someone now, to come. Um, but the sequel comes out. Eventually. Uh, there will be a sequel in like a year and a half because apparently oh, it takes yeah. forever to draw all these pictures. Right. Little there's like these little pictures. They're pretty nice, but apparently it takes time to do them. So once I finish, she needs like a year. It's crazy. Just like it takes a long time to learn to be evil. Yes. Okay, who else do we have uh, on, our, on our panel of authors? We have Shannon Messenger uh, and her cat. Did we lose the cat, Shannon? She ran away. One of the other ones started crying and that was it. We're gone. So she may come back. We'll see. <laughs> how, many, now, how many cats do you have? On your bio, it says you have an embarrassing number of cats. How many cats is embarrassing? I mean, it has varied over the years. Um, right now I'm at three, which considering that it's just me, they outnumber me three to one. So I'm a little bit embarrassing. solidly in weird cat lady <laughs> territory, but you know, they, they fill the day, they distract me. They're an excellent excuse to procrastinate, so. <laughs> what, what, are, what, are their what are the names of your cats? 
they're all pop culture names. So the one that was here in the very beginning is Melody Pond, which is a Doctor Who reference. Um, oh. And then the one that started crying and distracted her was Gwen Stacy. Um, Spider-Man reference, and then I have a big white with a little bit of black one, so we, I named her Harley Quinn, because um, she really is kind of the villain of the household, so. <laughs> I love it. And what about your books? So uh, we know you're the author of the Keeper of the Lost Cities series. Now, how, is there an embarrassing number of books? How many books are in your series? Are there uh, more books for our cats? So, I mean, they're also embarrassingly thick. Like, I swear I could do like armlets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, yeah, that, that is, the book is probably as heavy as all my books combined. Yeah, this one is um, over 200,000 words. Um, yeah, so just came out in November, newest one in the series. It's book eight. Um, and then I am working on it because I am one of those authors who wins the prize for most behind on deadlines ever. So I am still working on the one that's coming out in November. Um, it's, we're changing things up a little bit this year. We're doing it as an 8.5. It'll still probably end up being as thick, but it's sort of half series guide, half next part of the story, because I'm having to change up the way that I'm writing it. So mm -hmm. I'm doing it dual POV for this next little section of the story, because it was just a better way to tell it. So, And that's your middle grade series. <laughs> you also have a YA series, don't you? I do. I have a YA trilogy. That one's done. Um, so it was just three books. Right. They are ironically shorter than my middle grade <laughs> because I'm backwards like that. Okay. And we also have with us Sarah Milnowski. Now, Sarah, I'm hoping because I'm feeling very bad about my output after talking to Shannon. You know, about, <laughs> she, you know I, I, it takes me so long to write a book and so hard and so few. I'm hoping you have not written that many books, right? Right, Sarah? I've written 40 books. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I've, been, books? I've been writing no. for a long time. I've been writing for like over 20 years. I think time. that's more books than I've ever read. <laughs> uh, okay. okay, 40 books. All right. But you're not here to, to, to promote all of them, are you? No, I'm here to promote whatever, my whatever after series. The latest is Abby and Oz. And there are actually 14 books in this series. So there's a lot of books in this series. Yeah. Um, and the new book is a special edition which means that it is longer than the other ones um, and that Abby falls into, a, um, into the Wizard of Oz, the wonderful Wizard of Oz with her friends and messes it up. Because in each book, they're fractured fairy yeah. tales, right? <laughs> yeah, in every book in the series, thank you. They fall into a different fairy tale and mess up um, the fairy tale in every book. So in the first one, they fall into Snow White. The second one, Abby and her brother fall into Cinderella. And every book in the series, they fall into a different fairy tale. But in the special edition, they fall into a book instead, the wonderful way. So do you have to read them in order or is it just like whatever? I mean, it depends on the kind of person you are. You can, a lot of people nope. don't read them in order. <laughs> I'm an order person. Are you guys people who like to read things in order? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So am I, but you don't have to. They're all individual stories, but I, I am the type of person who gets annoyed if I don't read things out of order. But you can read them in any order you'd like. That's what I sometimes say about my series, but I don't mean it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, okay. We also have, last but not necessarily least, Lewis Peterson, uh, mm -hmm. the author, uh, with... I happen to know secretly, uh, or not so secretly, uh, the founder of the festival, Margaret Stoll, the, uh, the author of Cat, the Cats and Robots series, which uh, <laughs> has just come out with a second book. Yeah, that now with fleas. So the, the first book, I guess, didn't have any fleas. No fleas. No fleas. Now, also their child, uh, Kay, is the uh, artist in the book, I believe. Is that correct, mm -hmm. Lula? Yeah, yeah. They did all the illustrations and uh, it was actually, it was really fun to work together. Here's an example of something from the second book. It actually includes a dog. Um, it looks kind of like a, a flea-bitten farting dog. Yeah, he's a little spoiled, but you know. Um, so, uh, there were, the, the, the idea for this series, uh, there were actually cats and robots in the house with you all, is that right? Yeah, yeah, we got a couple rescue cats um, at one point and, and around then, I wasn't really involved in that decision, uh, it just kind of happened. And... You were more on the robot side of things, you were the robot yeah. rescuer? 
Yeah, I was <laughs> put my Animal Crossing guys back. Are those I, robot res? Are those rescue? Do you have a rescue robot? Yeah, I would make my own rescue robots, and and they needed space too. So I started designing robots to play with the cats, play with the cats. Mm -hmm. um, um, you know, maybe they would tease them, and but you know, they would the cats would kind of like it, and uh, sort of created our own stories around them having their own universe and having there be a much bigger story around the whole cat robot yeah, thing. I don't want to upset you, but in I don't know what it looks like on your screen, but on my screen, there's a cat right above you. <laughs> <laughs> I know, okay, you see that cat? it's okay, I actually like that. <laughs> Um, do you have a robot around? I do. I've got a couple robots. Well, this this is a robot. Let's see if we can make. Let's see what happens if we show the robots to the cats and the cats to the robot. Will there be a war? Melody, do you see? I don't know, because eventually they sort of learn to get along, like most people. Okay. But, uh, this is an example of a, a robot that I built to to mess around with the cats or slash play with them. It has um, a cat dancer thing. Shannon, Shannon, you can see Shannon sort of reassuring her cat and <laughs> trying not to let her cat see the screen. But it does have to be <laughs> scratched. <laughs> All right. This robot's okay. not well, I don't want to tempt fate. I don't know that we should tempt fate much longer. Um, yeah. Okay, so you got to any, so next, uh, are, what, I, I want to hear from all, who, who has, it? this can go, I'm throwing this question out to any of you. Um, uh, your next book. Well, let's start with Shannon since we're up there. <laughs> what's the scare? What, what's your What's your next project? What's the, and what's What's the hardest thing about uh, in your mind about the next book? What's the most What's scaring you about your next book? Um, it's scaring me that, that a it's not done yet and it's coming out November seventeenth. Um, so time <laughs> pressure. So you got you got a time pressure problem. A little bit. Um, and then I am writing it a different way than I've ever written it before. Um, it's really hard to explain why without spoilers. So just trust me, it was the right way to tell the story. But I'm doing it's, it's not your way. person, but usually the series is limited to Sophie's point of view. And we only are in scenes if Sophie is there and we only hear her thoughts. And because of some stuff going on with another character, it just was really hard to tell that next section of the story. I tried and it was just like, nope, I can't do this. All right, Melody wants to be free again, sorry. Um, so I just sort of decided that um, I had to let it be that I let that character tell their own portion of the story. So we're changing things up and I'm, feel, I'm having that feeling that I'm sure we all have where it's like suddenly I feel like I no longer know how to write a book. So would you um, like some help today? Sure, please write my book for me. Thank you. <laughs> what about you, Sarah? What's the like? Uh, you know, after forty books, you have you're you're obviously not very skilled or practiced at at, at this writing thing. What seems difficult for you about your next book? What are you What are you stuck on? Oh, oh your your voice is yeah. out. Got there it. Go. All right, I'm muted. I'm doing good as gold, which um is what, what do you think they fall into, Abby and Jonah? My like fairy tale. Skin? Good as gold. Rumpelstiltskin. Close. Actually, that could have worked, but no, mm -hmm. that's not it. Gone. Goldilocks. Well, Goldilocks. Oh. Goldilocks. Goldilocks. Anyway, so they fall into Goldilocks, and my well, my issue right now is that I don't want the bears to be the villain, so I have to come up with a new, you know, because it's a twisted fairy tale, and also the the original fairy tale is pretty short, so I have to usually if the story is longer, then I could come up with more ways to twist okay, it. Wait, 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 get, let me get this right, Sarah. So your problem is that you have to imagine something and come up with an idea. Yes, that, that's, <laughs> yes that's what I have to do, yeah. <laughs> that's the worst thing for a writer. <laughs> yeah, worst. Um, what, uh, what about uh, you, Soman? What's your, what's, 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 what's your, uh, what are you stuck on? What's so hard for you about your next project? So I'm going through a vampire phase, um, both personally and professionally and I feel like I've just been doing a lot of research on vampires and I find them super cool and um, I don't know I feel like coronavirus started with a bat so I just feel like vampires are the new thing. That's a sentence what, I kind of want to feel like it's scaring you a little bit is your are you basically just having are you afraid or are you I was at first and then realized I might be one secretly, so I feel like everybody else should be more afraid than me, but I feel like they're innately frightening creatures. So you have the identity issues. 
Wait, <laughs> sorry, no. How does a personal you, vampire phrase? You're writing, you're writing, your writing project is making you question who you are. Yeah, and every time I watch a vampire movie, I secretly think to myself, I feel like I'm actually one of them. So like, is there, like, so then I start looking for like vampire groups and are there vampire summits? But because of the whole social distancing thing, there's like nowhere for us to congregate. You do kind of glisten right now. So I think maybe you're a, you are a vampire. So I don't know. It's a, it's a personal growth project that will have to be postponed until after coronavirus. Mike, and, you, and what, 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 so you've already written your, your sequel, right? I'm writing it right now. Uh, it's due in June, so. Oh, so you're having deadline issues. Yeah, my only issue is actually writing it. Ah. I feel like the writing part of the writing that's getting you. The writing yeah. part, when you put the words in the computer and then they appear on the screen. <laughs> I hate that part. It's the worst part. <laughs> and it's the only part that I work on, so yeah, it's a horrible experience. Lou, you have a next project you, you and your robots are working on? Um, we're, it's, it's actually deciding the next project, uh -huh. um, whether to do another project with, within the cats and robots and exploring that a little bit more or coming up with the, with something new, thinking about possibilities of other autonomous, uh, robotic small creature interactions. Uh, so it's kind of an ambivalence and a, just a kind of crew you know, just a general stuckage. Yeah, it's the, what's the best, what's the best idea? What's the best thing to, to approach when there's, there's so many different things you could do? Well, I'm, so what do you guys do uh, when you're stuck or when you're trying to start a new project? Do you have any, idea, do you have any techniques of like getting out of being stuck or beginning a new, beginning something new? Does anybody have an idea for that? I think sometimes you have to accept that that it takes time to come up with a good idea. And so often the first 30 things that you write down are going to be awful. And you just have to sort of work through it. Your brain's trying to process it in, in the way that you think about it and in the way that you write. And so you can't expect whatever you come out with first to be any good. You know, your brain's just sort of toying around with an idea the way that a cat would be with like a piece of yarn. And eventually it'll figure it out. So... I always say, take your time with a new idea, accept that it's going to be bad for a while, and it will be good almost magically without you realizing it. That's great advice, but you know what? I'm much too impatient for that, so I have another, I have, I have another technique, which is that I, I steal my ideas from children. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> One of the great thing about being about it, one of the great things about being a published children's author is that you get to meet kids, and if they don't. Uh, know what they're doing um you know they can give you ideas you know i'm seeing somebody did i did i did i reintroduce uh speaking of my books <laughs> and me did i reintroduce my illustrator shane pangburn no i who, believe uh, you somehow forgot me um uh <laughs> your trusty assistant <laughs> i um, never do that sitting here <laughs> running the festival <laughs> in my pantry and just it's fine it's good to hear from you it's, it's good to see you honestly check your internet connection <laughs> um, I just, I, you know, I, it's, it's unusual that I notice him, but I just did. <laughs> yeah, so, so yes, everybody, uh, that's Shane Pangburn, <laughs> the illustrator of a very fine series uh, known as the Unbelievable Oliver series. Uh, the second, uh, the first one was the uh, Unbelievable Oliver and the f uh, Four Jokers. And the next one is coming out soon. It's the Unbelievable Oliver and the Sod and Half Dads. Is that correct? Uh, that's the that's the right title. Yeah, that's what they printed on it, and it'll be out on May twelfth. By by an uh, by uh, an author named Pseudonymous Bosch. Okay, so that's Shane. That's enough for him. Uh, <laughs> he's, you know, as, we, as we create a story today, he may be uh, helping us with doing a little illustration. Uh, okay. Um, now, I told you I steal ideas from kids, so um, we're going to try to get some help from the audience today. Audience, if you're listening, uh, I see a number of you have already started uh, working in the Q&A, uh, putting in some, uh, some uh, ideas and questions for us. So that's where you can uh, throw in uh, your thoughts about the story that we're going to be writing together today. So I was just thinking, um, what do you call, what, you know, what, we have to figure out a kind of story to tell, right? Um, who, you know, uh, 
Sarah, you've written so many books. Maybe you remember a word for the kind of story. I can't remember. This, what's the word for, for the kind of story? I can't. I'm having trouble. It's a genre? Is that what you're going at? <laughs> A genre, oh, right, 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 genre. That was the word I was looking for. It was just right there, but I couldn't think of it. Okay, so uh, a genre today. So I was thinking, what you know, we're in this kind of depressing time of quarantine, so we should write like a realistic, right, a realistic contemporary story about a life, life in quarantine, uh, where everybody's really unhappy. That kind of, that's the kind of book that we're looking for right now. No? no. <laughs> okay. Um, Maybe, oh, uh, you know what? I'm getting an idea from Lou's background. What about like a fantasy story? A fun, should we do a fun fantasy? Okay. It's honestly what the audience Q&A is saying right now. Uh, Not even gonna lie. Okay, let's do a fantasy. Let's, let's come up with a fantasy story. Okay, so the a fantasy story, what do we need? We, it's like it's gonna be a, a like what's a, what's a word like for that we need we need a world for our story right that's this where does the story take place what's the word shannon i'm trying to think like uh, uh, the story a story takes place like in a, a what i think it might be a setting oh, thank you setting i was trying to think of a word for a setting okay so a setting oh there we oh. go um what do you know Magic. Uh, on our screen. okay so Let's see, maybe somebody in our audience has an idea for a setting for our story. Does it take place in a, a school, in a swimming pool, um, you know, a bedroom? Oh wait, let's see, if does anybody have, well, uh, what about, I see, I think somebody's saying, under, our, under my bed, under your bed. Under your bed. What about, what about a universe, okay. All right, fine. A universe, a universe under your bed. A universe under your bed. What about a universe under your bed? Shane, can you draw that for us? A universe under your bed? Thank you. We're talking about me drawing a whole universe. An entire, yes. Can you draw an entire That's universe cool. for us right now, a, like in a flash? And a bed. I'm going to need, I'm gonna need a minute. I'm going to need just a minute. <laughs> OK, well, we need, well, uh, you, you work right, on I'm going to start drawing here. Okay, if if I'm going to draw, um, I'm going to need, my screen won't show up, you know, unless I have a little sound. So I'm going to put on a little bit of drawing music, okay? Okay. Real quick here. That, that sounds good. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> um, in the meantime, uh, Mike, what, what, what would be some, when you're trying to come up with a setting for a story, what would be, a, what would be something to think about? Uh, do you want it to be really boring and predictable? Do you want it to be, what, what, what would be a good thing about a setting? That we would think to um, I mean, I usually better. go with boring and predictable for my work, but I don't know. You guys probably have higher <laughs> standards than I do, so we should probably like work on this and come up with something original. Um, what, Sarah? Sarah, you, Sarah, what, what, if you were talking, if you were talking to a real kid in real time who wanted real advice, what would advice? What advice would you give them about? Uh, about this? Well, I'm just thinking how all the things that have fallen under the bed over the years have somehow come to life and have created a, uni a universe. And I'm trying to think of what those things are. So I, if I were um, writing and I had an idea for a setting, I would just start brainstorming all the types of things of why this is a unique setting, what could be fun about this setting, such as... So like, what do you find under, under a, a bed? For example, <laughs> you might find socks under a bed. Yeah. Maybe I'm going to start the music, okay? And, okay. and then I'll have Wait, the drawing so done. Um, I'm getting confused. I'm so what is what is no, no one's happening to the screen right now. <laughs> my my daughter. Uh, the live stream song from our uh, dance yesterday with Soman and uh, Maddie. Oh. 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 No. Well, can I ask, uh, while, we're, while we're trying to avoid watching me dance, can I ask uh, another basic question? Which okay. is, whose bed is it? We oh. need to know whose bed it is. Uh, what's your answer, Soman? Um, a, a vampire's bed? A vampire's bed. Vampire's <laughs> bed. So we have a universe right. under the bed of a vampire. <laughs> All right, keeping oh. that in mind going forward, but I already have the drawing for, uh, for the first bed. So let's, uh, let's get Ooh. that up. Okay, where's the universe? Nice. Let me see here. Cool. You're drawing very quickly, Shane. It's really uh, fast, guys. Just, uh, just you know, it takes a minute or two. Just need the music behind me. Okay, so that's the universe. There's the universe. 
It's the whole universe under the bed. Yeah. All right. There's the sock. And there's a dust, right. the dust bunnies. Yeah. Galactic dust bunnies. Galactic. That was amazing. How'd you draw that so fast? That was amazing. Magic, guys. It's a, we write magic <laughs> books. We make magic pictures. That's amazing. Okay, so, we have, so, so let's talk about our setting a little bit more then. So we have a, a, a bed that's slept in by a vampire. It's a kind of, it's not a coffin, it looks like a bed. So we're a kind of a, a, a vampire and a sort of naturalist, a kind of naturalistic, uh, you know, vampire, I guess. Maybe a young vampire since we're middle grade authors. Maybe it's a vampire trying to like live like a human. A vampire trying to live like a human. And like I'm going to I'm gonna <laughs> say him or her or them. There's a, a universe under this bed. Right? Yeah. Um, do the do the do the do the occupants, the, the, the galactic dust bunnies and the and the and the inhabitants of the planets under the under the bed, uh, do they know there's a vampire? Is there a legend about the vampire to them? Can Wait, hold on. Sarah said that stuff is falling under the bed that comes alive. Sarah, were you picturing like, like coins and like wrinkled tissues and like old newspaper? What were you picturing? I, I was picturing kind of like old, also some cookie crumbs, um, <laughs> Twizzlers, I don't know. Just things, books, like all these things that have, that have been falling under the bed for, I mean, if it's a vampire's bed, it could be centuries, right? That somehow get sucked into this universe and come alive. Maybe we can ask kids to tell us what's under their bed. Like yes. they should just look under That's their bed right idea. now. Yeah, yes. That's a great idea, someone. Uh, anybody who, who wants to reveal something under your bed, real go look happens. right now. Oh my God, look at that. Uh, everyone's looking under their bed. They're, They're finding black holes under their bed. It's just cat fur, so. <laughs> yeah, we have, a, we, we have a, so there's a black, there could be a black hole in this universe, yeah, absolutely. Ooh, a rock um, collection. So, okay, so I'm having a little trouble imagining it, but, but okay, but we have, if it's a universe under a bed, uh, and there, is the black hole maybe the portal between the bed and the universe, or is it something else? Lou, you have a scientific mind. Explain the relationship between the black hole, the bed, and the universe. We're asking mm -hmm. a robot to do so. <laughs> oh, you're asking, you're asking me? No longer. <laughs> um, too late. All right. <laughs> okay. So, all right. We do, never mind that. I think so. Okay. So anyway, we've got a little bit, maybe more of the story. Let's let's move on. Um, we know we're in this universe uh, with these things that have with the, these things floating around the universe, like socks, shoes, maybe a stuffed animal, books. Somebody's saying these are all things that are floating around in this universe under this bed uh, with this vampire. Uh, over it, who maybe is wreaking havoc on the on the time frames. The vampires are, you know, at least mostly nocturnal, right? So maybe there's a kind of like day and night are very confused in this universe, um, and the 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 legends around the the dust bunnies and the and the you know and and this and this vampire that they're having to be protected from, I guess, are are are, are all are all happening. Okay, so the main character of a story, a story needs characters, right? So um, let's see, who has a, what's the, what do you call the main character, the, the protagonist? I remember my teacher used to call the main character in school, but I, I feel like that's the wrong word. Um, who knows, a, who knows, what's the word for the main character? Uh, the cat, super, robot? Here, here's a hint, in case you don't get it. Super. <laughs> hmm? I think it was on a hat somewhere. Super hat. Hero! Oh, somebody put it up on screen. Okay, uh, the hero of our story. Now, when you're writing, uh, 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 when you're creating your, your uh, hero for a story, what are the things that we, as, as, as authors, do we think about first? We want to create uh, usually two-dimensional, uh, boring characters, right? Or um, is that the way to do it? Like, uncomplicated, as simple as possible, or just uh, we don't see them? We you like you need a character that has, yeah. yeah, you need a character who has um, something that they want and also they need a flaw. They need something wrong with them. Okay, so they want something and that gives them something, to, it gives us some forward motion and, and it's a way to identify with the character. Why would, they, why would you want something wrong with them? They're a hero. 
a, what uh, was the point of a flaw? I don't, I don't want I like my to up with the flaws. I do a character arc, right? So I always try to think of, well, how is the character going to grow or change in some way over the course of the story? So and the flaw, the flaw that they have something to overcome. That's brilliant, Sarah. <laughs> I'm going to try that in my next book. You so should. The, 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 so if the, the hero wants something, but there's a flaw, so it has some kind of, uh, creates some sort of conflict and makes it more difficult for them to achieve their goals. Mm -hmm. Your right, life, so your job is to make life for your character as hard as possible. So like whatever so they mean. want, like make it impossible for them to get it. Basically, we get to be evil geniuses as authors okay. if if you really think about it. So okay, so let's see. Do any of our do, like does any of our we our, our listeners have an idea for a hero? Is our hero another mini vampire? Is it a dust bunny? Is it a sock? Is it what? Who is our hero? What are the uh, there are a you lot. You know, a vampire, here. the vampire assistant. I'll give you guys extra points if you vote for the vampire for a hero, because <laughs> I feel like people don't let vampires be heroes. I don't think we have any choice. It has to be a vampire, Raffi. Okay, okay, so the so vampire the in the bed is the hero. A lot yes. of people are mentioning dogs, which I also think is super funny for a dog to somehow get sucked into this universe. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I have I have an idea. Well, let's put the let's put a pin in the dog because I have a, I have an idea for the okay. dog. Okay. Let's build out our vampire just a hit, a little bit, and then we'll get to the dog. So the vampire uh, is the vampire in the bed. Now we know there's a the universe we want the story to take place in is under the bed, right? Mm -hmm. So um, maybe uh, and there's a black hole. Remember? Mm -hmm. So maybe the black hole is the portal by which the vampire gets into the universe under his or her bed. Like a reverse Jack and the Beanstalk. Exactly. They get sucked into their own bed. So, and maybe the vampire, okay, and now you talked about flaws. Maybe the vampire is afraid of the monsters or things that the vampire suspects are under the bed. The vampire just and wants so to be a normal human And then they're being. gonna have to face their fears. Right? Yeah, vampire so, wants okay. to be normal. He wants to go on dates and go to school and have a normal life and, and eat pizza. But <laughs> like the whole vampire world is under the bed. Keep sucking him back in. He tries to get out and he gets sucked back in every time. <laughs> I, I think so. So he's, there's a competition between the human world. He's like Ariel in The Little Mermaid. He wants to go into the human world, but under the sea or under the bed is his vampire world. Who has an idea for a name? What's, our, what's, our na what's the name of the vampire? Ooh. I'm so bad at naming characters. <laughs> it takes what? me forever. I feel like what the kids what? are gonna have a good one. What are the kids Can you name a character? Or what, what do you think about to name a character? Like, do what you like, guys, like names that are random and naturalistic or do you like names that have meaning and are carrying forth ideas? No, it has to fit the vampire. It has to be a vampire's name. The kids like uh, uh, Vladimir, but someone said Clark. I like Clark, Clark the vampire. I like Clark. Clark with a superhero reference, right? I like it, a vampire with just like, it just kind of subtly makes you think of Clark Kent. I like that. Okay. Clark the vampire? Yeah. Okay. You might as well name him Steve. Maybe that's not, maybe he calls himself Clark. He has like right. some sort of like Romanian vampire name, but he's trying to be, you know, normal. And okay. Yeah. Uh, right? I can buy that. That's good. That works. That's good. <laughs> We're done. Okay. Nailed it. All right. I think we've got, our, we've got our hero. Okay, so we know our hero. Now, um, what do we need? Okay, so we have a good guy. We need a bad guy, right? So, um, you know, uh, you were trying to come up with a bad guy hero in your, in, your, in your book, Mike. What do you call the, oh, is that what you call the, oh, it's a villain. All right. right. Yeah, it would help if I had a big board on the screen. Oh, wait, what? wait a second. Who's, who's the villain? <laughs> He's there. Uh, that's not the, that's not what a villain looks like. Whoa, there's some evil guy on the screen. Pretty scary. Right, that's, not, that's not a villain. Um, okay, so like the our little villain. Little. Here's my idea that I was gonna I I, I, would, I put a pin in from before, and I'm and I'm feeling very proud of myself. I, it's almost like I'm a real writer. What if our villain? Because a dog is usually the good guy in the book. Just like just like a vil, a vampire is usually a bad guy, right? Isn't a dog usually like 
you know, that's how we know, usually that's how we know our hero is a good guy because they're nice to dogs, right? Isn't that the, a, a trope of movies and, and books that if they're nice to dogs, they're, and there's always the sweet dog. So what if we have, what if we have a villainous dog? That's okay. You can have a villainous dog as long as the villain doesn't die in the end, because if, if a dog dies, then we're all going to get hate mail. I once had a character kick a bunny, and I still haven't gotten to stop getting hate mail from it. <laughs> That's very... I also, when I create villains, I want to figure out why is this person, like, why would, would, is she a villain, for example? Like, oh. what did she, why does she act out against a vampire? I like to give her something so that we can empathize with her as well. So wait, wait, oh, wait, so you're saying villains should have, should be sympathetic? Yeah. And like we should identify with them too? Yeah, I do. But they're bad. Okay, but why, but we have to understand, the best villains are when we understand why they're bad. Wait, so Sarah, why does the dog, why is the dog, what does the dog want that makes the dog a villain? Okay, well maybe, and maybe the vampire's parent hurt one of the dog's family. So the dog, does the dog want to kill the vampire or what does the dog want, want to do? Yeah, I think the dog, dog really a dog. Maybe the dog is not actually, is the dog, maybe the, maybe the dog is a shapeshifter. I mean, no, we dog, want it to be a dog. dog. wants to pee on the vampire's bed. Like, I really, <laughs> like this is what dogs do, yeah. but. Yeah. Hmm. And what is it, but does the dog come from the other universe to suck him? Because we, now we have to go back to the other universe. Does the dog come right. from the other universe? Dog. The dog has to be a vampire dog because it came from the vampire's world. So, Can you have right. a vampire like, is it dog? Is a vampire that it like it craves something other than the normal vampire things? I'm, I, I don't know. And does the dog chase? Okay, well, does it, okay. is the dog going to be chasing? Okay, I have an idea. The vampire into what the world. The dog what if the dog is just trying to put the vampire back in the other universe? The, the vampire came from the universe under the bed, maybe, and the dog. The vampire, we're, we're, sorry, the, we're sympathetic to um, Clark because he wants to live a normal human life, but the dog does not want the vampire to live a normal human life. The dog is trying to put the vampire back under the bed. Right. So the dog's like the policeman. He's like the catcher. Yes. I love oh, that. that's good. It's like ironic. Normally we try to catch the dog and now the dog's trying to catch the human. Very good. I think that's really great. That's fine. Yeah. Nice. I like dogs. Um, okay. So uh, what's, the dog's, what's the dog's name? Let's ask the audience. Uh, Shane, what, is, what are they uh, saying for a dog's name? Uh, they are saying so much right now, folks. Uh, we got it. <laughs> George. A George is the name of my dog, and that's the first one I saw. But they like Puppy. That's just a name. That's just a young dog, folks. A Rufus? Med? No. Bethany? Shubby? Gary? Cujo? Come what? on, guys. We can't get Why sued. would you name a villainous dog catcher Bethany? Rye. They're naming the dog Rye. Sherman? Keith? Sabrina. I see. A few Sabrinas. Sabrina's okay, a lovely name for a Sabrina's dog. Sabrina's good. All right. Sabrina's okay, we'll go good. Let's go with Sabrina. Better than Bethany. Whoever put Bethany should be ashamed of themselves. Oh. Aww. For all okay. the Bethanys out there, you're, <laughs> you know, we, we're here for you. Some vampires aren't. <laughs> okay so all right so we have now we have our setting we have a we're a universe under a bed it's a vampire universe uh with galactic dust bunnies and floating socks and uh we have our hero who's basically made it out of the universe just wound up in bed and is trying to not trying to live in our normal world and then we have sabrina the dog um uh and I think that uh, who's trying to keep our, our, our uh, villain, I mean, not, not our villain, our hero out of this world. So um, it seems like may, maybe uh, if we're going to if if we want some things to take place in the world under the bed, right? Basically that our, our, our hero is going to have to be chased back in by the dog, right? So that seems like where we're headed. What, well, now, and like what would now what would be a let's let's talk about two things what would be the to, the, to begin the story what would be and it's kind of an inciting incident uh that would like get this story going like if you you wrote your your opening pages you know uh, maybe there's a teaser about the universe and then the, he wakes up in bed maybe what happens i think i think the vampire has a date and the dog comes to to bring him back right before the date so like you, you, you have all the anticipation of the date um, and then- This is the vampire's big chance and now the dog has arrived to bring him home. Okay. 
and then um, and then maybe the dog gets pulled in with with him like the dog chases him back into his universe and the dog winds up following well, that's a good question where do we want most of this book to take place in the universe under the bed or in the real world what's more exciting under the bed yeah, I think so too. yeah. So okay, I think you know, he can't, yeah, he's got to be pulled back into vampire land. Okay, you know what? Um, we're kind of running out of time somehow. <laughs> uh, it it's so exciting. Um, so we'd have, we have our inciting incident, um, then we'd have what, some rising act, we'd have like our, we'd, have, we'd establish our goals uh, and our conflict, we'd awesome. have rising action. Uh, EB, so I'm going to switch to the screen share, we've we'll, got some new drawings and then we'll, we'll finish it now. Okay. Oh. Oh. And Shannon's in there also. So his name is Clark, but yes, he's really Vlad. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's Sabrina. Oh, she's scary. That's Sabrina. <laughs> Maybe a vampire. Um, so now we can go through the rest of the stuff, but I think we got to go quick, Ravi. Yeah. Okay. So we have an exciting incident. What do we have next? We have rising action, maybe, or a conflict climax. We're gonna get to a twist yeah. climax, mm -hmm. a denouement, maybe. Right. It's all happening. Actually. So conclusion. Let's do a quick lightning round from everybody. How would you resolve the story, Shannon? Do you have an idea for like wh where would you like the story to end up? I, I like happy endings. I, I mean, I, I, I feel like, you know, there needs to be some sort of tragic thing right before, but then I, I like some sort of happy ending where, where the vampire and the dog come to some sort of new understanding Aww. of each other and some sort of compromise and, and that sort of so the dog. happiness, you know, especially right now when things are so sad, let's, let's give our story some sort of uplifting, yay, we feel good ending. Is that where you are with it, Sarah? Yeah, I would also throw in a ticking clock because we, <laughs> I love a good yeah. ticking clock. <laughs> so I think that while they're in, under the bed, they only have like maybe one hour mm -hmm. to, uh, to something to solve all the problems before the portal closes forever and both universes explode. Could I love little, this you know what? It could be a process of like, oh yeah, that plot thing. We'll just skip that because we're running out of time. We'll figure that out later. <laughs> so ending. We need an ending. Like, yay, this is you guys are really seeing what writing is like right now. <laughs> ending. I, you know, we could have a literal ticking clock since it's uh, wanted, it's like a little clock, alarm clock. Because, you know. One minute. That's the ticking clock right now, guys. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Mike, Mike, how, how, how would you end the story? Um, you know, maybe he learns to love being a vampire and goes back home to be with his vampire folks. And the dog is a vampire after all. And, and the like, dog stays. Yeah. He likes eating blood. Yeah. The dog realizes he has, she has more in common or, uh, with vampires than she thought. Yeah, this world not that great right now anyway, so I will go to another one. <laughs> you have any ideas, Lou, about how you would end the story? I think the dog meets somebody at the love of their life and want, decides to stay with the vampire and just sort of like, you know, go that way. So right, so right feeling about uh, conciliation, uh, vampire dog love story. And yeah, then... the dog, dog sees things from the vampire's perspective and is like, you know what, this is actually pretty good. What do you think, Sean? No. I, I think that it's all been a trick, and the dog uh, traps a vampire back in the vampire universe, and the dog stays in the human world and reveals its real name is Bethany and goes off to have a very happy life in human world. <laughs> Look, we brought it full circle. We did it. <laughs> and really, and really, the vampire was the villain all along. <sighs> vampire. Oh. Uh, I think these are all great endings. Now, uh, people in the audience, uh, I am, I'm sure you guys all have much better ideas than we do. In fact, I'm absolutely I'm certain of it. Uh, if anybody wants to really write up this story, uh, we would love that uh, and appreciate it. Of course, you signed all the, the NDAs and everything else and all your ideas belong to us. Uh, so if you really like them, uh, they're, they're ours. But no, seriously, Write the story if, if you're inspired. We and you can uh, send it to uh, the link. Uh, at, what is it, Shane? I, 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 wrote, I actually com, right? send it to Shane at yallwest.com. Subject story ball. Uh, 
fantastic. And we get me, we love, if we, if we, uh, we love the stories, maybe uh, one or two of them will be posted. Uh, who knows what could happen? Uh, or, uh, or you'll see them in the pages of our books uncredited. Um, <laughs> Thank you uh, to our fine panelists. Um, and uh, I think that might be it. Uh, you know, enjoy the, what's, what's next, Shane, uh, on the roster for uh, Y'all Stay Home? Let's pull up the next slide. The next slide is Suckage is Part of Writing. It starts at 11 a.m., which is right. coming up soon. <laughs> Goodbye, right. everybody. So tune on in. We'll see you all later, folks. Thank you so much. <laughs>